Hello, and welcome to Up to Speed with Online Teaching. My name is Jonathan Haber. In this set of videos, we're going to cover assessments and assignments, specifically how to create quality assessment assignments for online learning courses. Uh, and as I like to describe assessments and assignments in this context, we're really talking about how to help students put their learning to work. Uh, now, to begin with, the term assessment has a fair amount of baggage associated with it. So what I like to do is ask you to think about it in the way that I tend to think about it, which is assessments, assignments should be thought of as active learning components. Okay. So what do I mean by active learning components? Well, much of course involving lectures, for examples, or reading, these aren't passive activities, but they are about students absorbing information. Whereas an active learning component is really anything within a course that asks students to put their learning to work. And there's principles associated with creating good active learning components. Uh, to begin with, an active learning component, an active learning component should be designed to support the overall goals of the course, and we'll be covering goal setting in a subsequent video. Uh, active learning components should also be as interesting as every other aspect of a course. Uh, if your lectures are very uh, exciting and energizing and interesting, or classroom discussion, uh, either uh, in person or online, is sort of very engaging, your active learning components should just be should be just as interesting as every other aspect of your course. And finally, the professional assessment development process that I'll be going over in this set of videos, this should be used to maximize the quality and effectiveness of any active learning component. Okay, so before getting into some of the details on what you'll be learning in this course, I want to cover the concept of stakes because assessments are associated with different levels of stakes. For example, you can have a low stakes assessment and a low stake assessment has no external outcomes. Right? You could think of a format of assessment you might use in class or an SAT practice or some other pre-training assessment or even an anonymous survey in the back of a magazine. Right? No one is going to get in trouble if there's an error in an SAP, SAT practice test. Uh, no one's going to find themselves in court. Uh, in contrast to high stakes assessments, which are standardized and validated and developed by often teams of test development professionals, these do lead to important external outcomes Right, for in terms of Professional licensure exams, you can't work as a nurse unless you pass the NCLEX. You can't work as an accountant unless you pass passed AICPA. Uh, I don't have to talk to educators about the importance of standardized educational exams like the SAT, ACT, and GRE. These are gatekeepers to higher education. And certification exams, like some of the technical certifications I have listed here, often a job hinges on uh, passing one of these exams. Okay, so there are high stakes if there's uh, cheating on the SAT or an error in grading on the NCLEX, that will make the newspapers that could end up in a lawsuit. Okay, now, in between low and high stakes, you've got medium stakes exams. Uh, now, these are not necessarily standardized. They're not often developed using the kind of teams of professionals you get for uh, professionally, professionally developed exams. Um, and there are external outcomes, but they're limited. If you give a test and everybody fails, uh, you're going to get complaints from students, maybe a call from a parent or administrator, uh, but you're not, not going to end up on the cover of the New York Times. You're not going to end up in court. And I would point out that the vast majority of academic assessment falls into this category of medium stakes. Okay, now, medium stakes assessment uh, and low stakes assessment are usually developed uh, in similar manners in that there is a single authority, usually the teacher or the professor, who makes all the decisions regarding the assessment. Uh, they decide what content is going to be covered in the assessment. They determine what's going to be in the test and how it's going to be, how skills are going to be tested. Uh, they may write all the questions and they may do all the grading. Uh, even if the a professor uses TAs to help them with the grading, uh, they would provide instructions to those TAs criteria for doing their grading. Okay, so, and that single authority very frequently uses a process I refer to as waylock, which is write a lot of questions, meaning they jump right into the content development process. And this is in contrast to the professional exam development process that I'll be teaching you elements of in this set of videos, which goes through several steps in the test development process, starting with goal setting, moving on to planning for the assessment, 
and then moving on to content development, which could involve item writing or assignment creation, and finally analysis. These steps taken together are referred to as the backwards design process. And the reason for these instructional videos is that this backwards design process can improve the quality of the assessments and assignments you're including in your online courses. Uh, they can give students more meaningful experiences and more opportunities to put their learning to work and demonstrate what they've learned. And ultimately, they can make your courses more effective and even make the test development process more efficient. Okay, so we'll be going through each of these steps starting next time with goal setting.